we're going to start off with news you can use. Uh, right up front, I want to talk about housing prices across the U.S. Um, I told you before that we, we tend to have areas of California, there's some areas of the country, some specific cities that are kind of immune to some of these highs and lows that happen in the business out there. One of those areas is um, the Bay Area of Northern California, the San Jose to San Francisco Bay Area. There's a particular county up there called Santa Clara County. It's a county in which uh, not only COVID started, but it is uh, the county in which San Jose resides. And they have been pretty immune, um, even during the downturn. When, you know, when the rest of the country dropped 25 or 30 percent, these guys went down six, seven, eight percent in price. Um, I'm going to read you an article, or read you part of an article from uh, the San Jose Spotlight, which is a local newspaper highlighting housing stories in Santa Clara County. It said that the median selling price in Santa Clara County at the end of July was $1,750,000. Now, believe it or not, uh, up in that area, that could be a three bedroom, two bath, 1400 square foot house that was built in the 1940s or 50s. So that's, that's all you get for that amount of money in that area, uh, in a nicer area. But at the end of November, the price had dropped to 1625000. So it had dropped $125,000, uh, which is about an 8% drop in what, three, four months uh, period of time. So the market is dropping. And, and like I said, the economy is fairly resilient. One of the reasons that Santa Clara County and San Jose in particular uh, are resistant to some of these price spikes is because of things like uh, Facebook, Instagram, and you know all these businesses, Google that are and Apple that are based in that area. A lot of those employees and you know those those businesses have continued to go on and increased and things like that, um, while everything else is you know kind of dying on the vine. Uh, those businesses keep going so. Uh, it is very interesting. They were shocked. They were surprised. Uh, the realtor group up there was, you know, uh, surprised. They thought it would be, in fact, they were predicting a 10% increase. And instead, we had an 8% decrease. So I think you're going to see more of these things. A lot of these trends start here on the, the left coast or the west coast, and they work their way back. I think you're going to see more and more of this kind of thing happen, where uh, surprisingly, all of a sudden, the prices are starting to drop you know, shock and awe, uh, even though today in one of the national realtor magazines, they're kind of doing a thumb your nose at uh, those of us who are, are saying that we're going to have a uh, reduced amount of, uh, or a reduced price on the general house across the country. So we'll see what happens. Um, second thing, last thing I want to talk to you about is the Fed and their pricing policy for interest rates. The Fed has been adamant that they will, and we've talked about the various factors on some of these other calls, the Fed's been adamant that they will uh, raise these interest rates. Initially, they said 2023. Now they're talking about next fall. Next fall will be like the third quarter, fourth quarter of 2022. And their goal was to get the housing prices, the mortgage rates to around 4% from the around three or a little over three that they are currently. Um, but, and, and they've, they've been adamant about this all the way through that this was going to happen. Today, there's an announcement that this Omicron variant of COVID, I guess, is a big thing. It's not here in California yet, or at least it's not here in any big thing, but it is um, evidently on the East Coast, and it's, it's causing some havoc out there. And the Fed today, for the first time, said, that maybe Omicron variant of COVID is going to stop their first rate hike from happening. Um, I don't know if this is an excuse that they've conveniently tagged on to, but um, they have backed off of what they're saying in terms of a, a rate hike. And in fact, the stuff I'm reading is this may, if this thing gets bad, uh, and it may get bad, you guys probably saw the news over the weekend, the state, the governor of Florida is going to is called for or has is instituted a 30-day stay-at-home order in the state of Florida. I guess it's pretty bad there. 
Um, but anyway, uh, this is going to potentially be the thing that the Fed hangs its hat on in terms of allowing rates to not only stay the same, but potentially drop more. If that happens, that will spike the housing inventory and the housing prices across the country. And we will continue to see houses, house prices increase instead of decrease. It's, this thing is very rate sensitive. Um, if this thing goes up to three and a half or 4% like the Fed wanted it to happen, uh, that's gonna just put cold water on the, the hot housing markets, even in places like San Jose. California. Um, if it doesn't and the rates stay low, we could see another increase next year. So we will let you guys know, uh, you know, a lot of this is outside of anybody's control because, like I said, the Fed is hanging their hat on this Omicron variant of COVID that is spiking through the country and other parts of the world. All right, that's it for news you can use.